Welcome to Google Forms. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to show you two ways you can use Google Forms. One is just to create a quick check-in, whether it's for your students or if you just want to check in with your colleagues. Maybe you're, I see we have a few leads on. Maybe you want to do it just to check in to see how everyone's doing. Um, and the other way is to build a quiz in Google Classroom. So from the Google homepage, you can either click on your waffle to get to Google Forms. If it's, you might have to scroll down to find it. It's a purple icon. If you don't have it, you might see a more down here, or the easier way is to just type forms.google.com in your URL. You'll land on the Google Forms homepage on the dashboard. Any forms that you've created recently will be down here. And then we do have some templates that you can use, but we're going to get started with a blank form. So go ahead and click on blank form. So once we're in our Google form, you're going to name your form. I'm going to start with the daily check-in. After you put the name in, click up here on the left-hand side in the top because it says untitled form and that's how it will live on your Google Drive as untitled form and we do not want a whole bunch of untitled forms on our Google Drive. If you click here, it will just pick up the name that you typed in here. So it just automatically does that. So don't forget to make sure your name is in two locations. You can add a form description right here. This just gives you your end user and extra, extra information. So in this case, I'm just going to please use this form to submit your daily work accomplishments or just your daily accomplishments or let us know how you're doing. You can see they preload this with one question. So if you just click on untitled question, you'll have a space to type your first question. Now, notice how when I, I just want the, the person's name, Google Forms automatically says, oh, it looks like you want a short answer. And it sets this up to be a short answer question. Just so you know, Google Forms does have a multitude of questions. You can do multiple choice, check boxes, drop down. And we'll show you those in the quiz when we show you how to build a quiz in Google Classroom. So this one automatically does a short answer text. This has it set to required, which is great because it means people have to answer this question. If you want a little bit more information from people, if you can say, just you can show description and say, please use first and last name. There are people on a quiz that will just have this set up so that First name is one question, last name is another question so that you can sort if you're using a Google uh, Sheet because you can get your data in a Google Sheet. But this is just a quick little check-in and they just can put their name. To add a new question, I click on this plus sign. Now notice how this is blue. This shows me where I am in the form. When I click the plus sign to add a new question, it will automatically build underneath where I am. So be sure that if you want the question to fall underneath it, you would just click plus sign. If you wanted it to be above it, because you say you forgot to put something in, you click on this and then click the plus sign. So wherever the blue or your color might be different is, you just make sure you're there and then click the plus sign. So my next question is I want the date because if I'm collecting all this data along the way, while we're in the closure, I want people to date when they're giving me their input. And notice again, Google said, oh, you want a date. So what's nice about this question is that it will be a little calendar that pops up and people can just click on it. Next question, I'm going to ask what they accomplished today. So what did you accomplish today? And Again, Google knows, oh, you want a paragraph. You want to give people a lot of space. So I don't want just a short answer. I want a paragraph. And then the last question I want to ask is, what questions and concerns do you have? Questions and concerns, again, paragraph. And it's required. So all of these questions are required. So I've got my four questions. Just want to keep it simple as a quick check in with people. And it is ready to go. So the big question people ask is, well, what do you mean? It's ready to go. What do I do with it? couple of things you want to do. First, if you want to see what this looks like, click on the I, and this is what your end user will see. And if you close that, you'll go back to your editing form. So you can tell this is in editing mode because you see questions and responses and you see all these icons. As opposed to preview, you don't see any of that. 
if you find yourself in this mode and you're like, oh, how do I get back to the other one? You can also just click on this pencil. But keep in mind, now you have it in two places. You can see I'm bouncing back and forth between those two tabs. If you do want to personalize this, you can do so by clicking on the artist palette to customize. You can choose an image to go in the header. They have many, many options. I'm feeling jelly beans today. And it will actually uh, put the image at the top and change the color of the theme. If you don't like the theme, you can again change the theme color, the background color, and they do have a few basic fonts that you can change the fonts to as well. It, 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 your choices and you can customize it a little bit and then again just click on the eyeball and you can see what it looks like for your end user now to send this to people simply click on the send button and let's say i'm sending this to my colleagues i just want to check in see how I'm doing i could send that to email so i could just fill in people's emails here and it would just automatically send them in an email if i check this it would uh, include the form in the email, they could actually fill it out in their email. Or I can get the link, I can shorten the link here, copy this and I could put it in, again, I could paste it in an email, I could paste it in a Google Doc, I could paste it in my, uh, link it in my Google Classroom. So there's many ways you could get that to people. A couple of things you wanna do, if you are setting, we, we do wanna make sure that we are capturing people's email if we are sending this to a colleague, so we have their email if we wanna respond, or if we forgot to ask them their name, or if we're sending this to students so you have a record that they use their email, you have a couple of options. If students are, um, this is set up to be uh, for anyone in Linwood Unified. So if you're sending this to parents and you wanna get information from parents, uncheck that, okay? That means anybody who, get, it, it, anybody who gets this will be able to, to respond. If you want to collect email addresses, you can get people's email addresses, but I, but if you wanted to remain anonymous, you're just trying to get feedback from people, you would want to uncheck that. So collecting email addresses means they would have to log into it. If you want response receipts, response receipts gives you the option if a person requests it or you can always send it so that people know what their questions are. You can limit people to one response. This is particularly handy if you're doing the quiz, which when we'll get to the quiz settings, you definitely want to limit students to one response on your quizzes. And then we'll go over quiz settings later. So if I want to add that question here to a uh, period and I want it to be underneath name, I click on name. So again, I have this indicator here that that's where I am. I click the plus sign, it's going to add it underneath and I can do period. Now, since period might be, if I, I probably would want to do that as a drop down. So I could do period one, copy that, paste it, period two, paste it, period three, and so on. Okay. This is great, as a secondary teacher mentioned, if you want to be able to separate the data for your students. And then if we want to preview that, how that looks, so they would just choose, scroll through, and choose one when they respond. But if they click the More button, you can uh, add a collaborator. A collaborator is just like you give someone edit access and will also allow them, as Sandra said, to make a copy. And you would just invite people just like you would normally invite them to, I'll invite Sandra. And she will get an email that she has access to this Google form. If you are sharing this, is she should go here and make a copy. Otherwise, her data will show up on my form if she sends this form to her students or colleagues. So if you create a quiz as a department level, then you can add your colleagues as a collaborator, and then they should make a copy so they, they can send a different link to their students so they have different data. And so you can see, I don't know, there's Sandra. She is on this question. She's a different color than I am because I'm on this question. So it's neat. You can see what people are doing. A few things about this. When you are working on a Google Form together, it, it is not as a it is not as synchronous as Google Forms is. We're going to now pop on over to Google Classroom. So I'm going to close this one out. And I'm in our digital 
learning Google Classroom. So from the Classwork tab in Google Classroom, we're going to create a quiz assignment. Okay. What's great about the quiz assignment is that this quiz will be built right into Google Classroom as a Google Form, so you won't have to go find the link and share it with your students. It'll be shared directly to your students in Google Classroom. I'm just going to call this, um, I'm going to call this a Google quiz because I have a few Google questions. Google quiz. You can put any type of instructions just like in any Google Classroom assignment. And here's the blank quiz. One thing I want to make sure I do is turn on grade importing. What grade importing will do is it will take it, uh, the data from the Google form after it's been scored and it will send it over to your Google Classroom and put the grades right in there for you. I'm going to assign this to my students. I know it's still blank, right? But from the Google quiz, I can click here and I can build my Google quiz completely. Now, since I've opened it from the classroom, I need to click edit this form because it's blank quiz. And obviously I don't want it to be called a blank quiz. I'm going to call this Google Tools Quiz. Okay. Again, I click up here, I'm gonna to have to rename this. And I've got a few questions I wanna ask my students. So my first question is, which Google tool is used to create documents like letters, essays, et cetera? So this knows it's a multiple choice. I'm going to type the names of the tools. What's neat is that it thinks I'm asking about somebody's t-shirt size. <laughs> so I could add all those, but I'm not asking that question right now. Sheets, forms. If you click add other, this will actually give your students a blank line to write a response. So do not do that, but make sure you, when you are actually adding a new option, just click add option and you can type in another option. Okay. So there's multiple choice. I have five options. Now, of course I need an answer key. So notice since it's set up as a quiz already, if you click answer key, then you can check the correct answer and assign the points. I'm gonna say this is a two point question. You can also add answer feedback. So if they get it correct, you could just say, great, good job, and incorrect. Sorry, that is incorrect. Again, you do not have to give feedback for the questions at all. Just an option that's there for you. So if they get a correct answer, they get a good job. If they get incorrect, sorry, that's incorrect. This is when they get their, their test back. To add another question, it's the same as we were doing before. Click the plus sign. In this case, I want to ask, you can use slides too, and I'm gonna kind of put a dotted line. See how it automatically populated that? What you can't see is I have a doc off screen that has those four choices on a, on a doc in a list, and I just copied and pasted. So it was a lot easier than having to go through and type up here. And then I need to go to my answer key. What can I use slides for? To create presentation. Again, not 20 points. I'm going to make that worth two. Again, you can assign any point value you want. I'm not going to bother with answer feedback on this question. And I click done. What's great is that all of these multiple choice questions, as well as check boxes and drop down, can be scored by the computer. Google Forms will score it for you and assign the points. Now, short answer. So I'm going to do a short answer question in a second, will allow you to, it, it can auto score if you have all of the different options for, uh, for students. So as we know, if we were asking students to say, for example, on that first one, which one, and they spelled docs as they wrote Google docs instead of docs or Google forms, and you didn't put that in there as a, as a spelling option, then it would be marked wrong. So I'm gonna show you how to grade things that are spelled incorrectly, but you still want the students to have the points. Let me go on and add another question. So again, same thing. Which app will let you change the font style, size, color? And in this situation, I am going to say, choose all that apply because there are multiple select answers here. So I'm going to make that check boxes. 
And in my answer key, all of these are correct answers. And again, since there are four, three answers and everything's gonna be worth two points. You admit when you go to score this assessment, if you manually score this, you can say, well, they did say docs and slides, but they forgot about sheets. I can give them four points instead of six. So you can vary that as you do a manual scoring. And then done. And when I have one more question, which is a short answer. And again, the AI knew that this was a uh, short answer question. What's the name of the tool that holds all your Google work? It's even telling me the suggested answer is vault. The actual answer is drive. So here, it's where you can add all your different answers. So I can say, if I want the computer to, uh, to Google Forms to score it for me, I need to think of all the different iterations of how students might type their response, which would include incorrect spellings. And I can't think of all the incorrect spellings. I am gonna put these here because I know those are probably some of the common ones that people put, but I will show you how you can manually score it and still give people a response. So if you were running this as a spelling test or vocabulary test, and you're like spelling must count, you put the one way you want students to spell it, then you would mark all other answers incorrect and then they would be able to, it would automatically score it for you because you only have one correct answer. If you wanna go in and check your quiz settings, you can go to settings and go to quizzes. You can see this is already made a quiz. When do you wanna release the grade? So if it is all multiple choice, and you're going to have the computer score everything, they can get their score right after they submit. Since we have a few spelling things we wanna check or we had some short answer or even a paragraph, if you had them to submit an essay, you could do that here. You can turn on later for manual review. This allows you to check it manually. And remember I said that question that was worth six points then you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna give them four points because they did do a partial answer. So you would do that under manual review. So you wanna switch that to manual review. And then when they answer, when they're done, you can let them see miss the questions they missed. Okay, you can see if you hover over this question mark, it gives you a little bit of uh, clarity. And then correct answers. If you want the students to see the correct answers. Now, since your students are at home, they may be sharing them. They may have a friend in a different period. So you may want to turn that off so that they don't know the correct answers yet. And maybe as a class, you're going to review it in the next class session. And then point values if you want the students to see how much each point is, is each question is worth. And again, you can just hover over these question marks to get a little more clarity. And then click save. So this quiz is now over here. I'm going to refresh my screen. It should have renamed my quiz. See, now it says Google Tools Quiz, which is what I renamed it over here. I've assigned it to the 13 students in my classroom, but I do have another quiz that we set up this morning and asked them to take. If I want to add an image for the Google slide for an answer, I click on the Add Image icon, and then I can do a Google image search. So if I was looking for Google Slides, there's a little icon for Google Slides. You just click it and insert, and then it puts the image there. And now I'm gonna do it for all of them so you can see what it looks like in a preview mode because it does not look how it looks in edit mode. If I preview this, it looks gonna look a lot nicer. So you can see it looks a lot nicer than what it was looking like on the other side. So if you have those options for your, for your littles, this would be perfect. This can also be handy if you are teaching different, um, I've seen um, people find images of molecular structure, say example for, for science. So there are different things you can do. Okay. You can also, the question itself, you see this has that little icon as well. You can add a, an image that connects to the question as well. So I have seen teachers um, put in a, a uh, like a food web or uh, the water cycle and then ask a question that relates to that. In addition, I can put an image or a video my first question. So for example, if I click video, Google tools for school, top five Google tools for social studies teachers and students. Four minutes, I click select. This video is now, you can see it's not a question. It is right here. I can center it. I can also resize it. 
So I could have my students watch this and then build questions, watch this video, and then build questions related to that video are underneath it. So to work on those uh, listening and speaking skills, I guess listening skills, not so much speaking skills, but you could put pop any video in there and then ask questions related to that video. So here is an example of a quiz, and I do have seven responses. Here's how you can score your quizzes. You have the questions, and you'll see the responses tab should have a number next to it. So I have seven responses. This first page is the summary. This sort of gives me an overview of how everyone did on the quiz. I can see all my students who took the quiz, their score. But if I want to score this by question, Okay, so here's Sacramento, that's fine. I can see here who answered incorrectly and said it was Los Angeles. If I scroll through here, I can look through all of the answers. Now, all of these were multiple choice, so I let the scoring happen. But I had one question with a fill in the blank. And this here says I have four ungraded responses. These people said Massachusetts, so it is correct. They spelled it correctly, and I'm gonna give them the two points. I do two points and mark correct. Someone said the Red Sox, which we know is wrong. So I can just say, that's wrong. And again, only one student did that. And here's a student who answered one ungraded, but they put mass, which you know what? I'm okay with that because they know it was Massachusetts. So I can mark that as correct. Baked beans, obviously incorrect. I have some very sarcastic people on our team. So I can, this is where I can say, okay, they didn't spell Massachusetts correctly, but I'm still going to give them the two points. So this is where you can do that in individually uh, by question. In addition, got to click save. And I can also go through individually and go by student by student to see how each student did and score those individually. If you have a lot of students, you're not going to want to score it this way. But I can also go through here and if the student is really struggling, I can add individual feedback. I can also, I don't know if you saw, you can send them a link and you can also send them a video. And once you're done with that, I'm going to come back. I'm going to import their grades from that Google form. So this is how you want to import their grades. Hopefully it will populate some of the other students who didn't click turned in. So you can see here, Chris has eight out of eight, Liz has an eight out of eight, uh, and Al has zero out of eight. So I'm gonna up his score because I think he had a six. This isn't working, it's, this is not working precisely because the, the form was sent to them directly rather than in the classroom and they didn't click turn in. Your students need to click turn in, which these two students did. And then I return that to students. And now this is done. If you don't return the grades to students, you cannot import from, uh, you cannot send the grades to Aries. So you have to have returned the assignment to students. And now you can see the students that were scored are down here and these students were not scored because they hadn't turned it in or they hadn't completed it. This did pick up Al's score, okay? And Liz's score. So that's how you can score them individually, which makes it a lot easier for, for you to uh, put out a quiz. On the responses, you can, if you, if you wanna manipulate the data in any way, you can simply click on this, which will make a Google Sheet for you. And then you can see it in a Google Sheet. But Google Forms, you can see all the answers at once if you needed to, for some reason, sort it. But Google Forms does a really good job now by summary question individuals. So you really don't have to dig into a sheet, particularly if you're a secondary teacher. It just ends up being a, a lot of data in one form.